There we go. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation Coaches Show with Head Coach Rodney Southern. We thank you so much for joining us. Give yourselves a round of applause. What a crowd. One of our biggest crowds yet. I yes, I think so too. It's going to be a good one. Coach, yeah. are you awake now? I told you not to sit next to the speaker. <laughs> it is what it is. We welcome you back. It's been two weeks since we've been back here as we uh, get ready for this district opener against West Fork on Thursday night. Joining us first here is the quarterbacks coach for the Huntsville Hornets. Y'all give it up for Mr. Jason Elliott. Thank you. Coach, how are you, sir? Doing well, man. How are y'all? I'm doing good. 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 Glad to have you back here on the <clears> show. So, for someone who may be listening for the uh, very first time, just uh, introduce yourself and uh, what it is you do at Huntsville and how long you've been here. Well, I, my name is Jason Elliott, and I'm the quarterback's coach. Uh, I've been the quarterback's coach for the last three years, and uh, I've been in Huntsville for over 30 years now. I've been teaching and coaching for 31 years here. So, Wow. Uh, I'm the adaptive uh, PE coach for the district, so I work with students with disabilities that uh, need a little help in, in the regular PE setting, and so I support them and, and the teachers in the classroom. So. Absolutely. Brian? Hey, Coach. Looking at uh, the quarterback room, you have a senior in Austin Taylor, <clears throat> and you have an up-and-comer in Zay Adolph, who is, I found out I was corrected <laughs> two Friday nights ago on his age, 14, 14 years, years old. old. 14 years old, and I just, man, I still can't wrap my head around that. What, between those two quarterbacks, what has interested you between the two of them and their progress so far this year? Just, uh, you know, starting with Austin, uh, just his maturity, you know, his, how he stepped up the last couple of years and, and uh, spending time in the, in the quarterback room. You know, we watch a lot of film, spend, you know, that time in film, and, and he's learned to watch film and, uh, He's been able to, <clears throat> like when we get out and we run the scout offense, or scout defense, excuse me, he's able to set the defense up for our scouts. So that lets me know, you know, things are, are doing, uh, he's doing what he needs to do in that time. And, uh, <clears throat> and to have him in the room and then to bring Zay in, 14 years old, he's a very gifted athlete, very gifted, you know, young man. And he uh, can run the football, he can, he can throw the football, he can do a lot of things for us. Uh, so he, he's learning from Austin in that situation, in that, in that quarterback room. Uh, and, uh, and we are very blessed to have, have that type of talent in that room uh, to where he can, he can learn from Austin. And, and uh, hopefully, you know, we have a good push, you know, in, in this season. And, and good things happen for us, you know, because we, we, we work our backups uh, to where they're, you know, just one snap away any given time. They, they have to be ready. And... Uh, He's been he's been doing that, and you know we don't want any, of course we don't want anything to happen to Austin, you know, because uh, we we plan on uh, big things from him, and he's taking those steps to be able to do that. So. You know, the one thing you know, Carlos and I talked about this Saturday night after the Sam Houston football game about when you get a chance to play backups. Yes. How valuable that time is for those guys because they are truly one play away. Correct. And to your <clears> point about Austin, um, and his his maturation from last year to this year, uh, I think it's very obvious. I, I mean, you can see his field generalship out there is completely different than last year. It is. You can, you can see it on and off the field, you know, when we come over, you know, to the bench after we come off the, the field from offense and, and just the way he's focused. It, it's, it's changed uh, so much than from where he was, you know, two years ago, a year ago. And uh, pretty proud of him. And uh, – and then getting back to where you're one snap away, we planned, you know, our, our non-district to X amount of series where Austin would get, then we would bring Zay in just to get him those reps, to get him that feel, you know, for the game. And, um, and we're excited about, you know, the things that he's been able to do in those situations. Uh, looking back at Cedar Park, it wasn't a whole lot of passing when you, when you don't need to when the running game is no. just going so, so well. Just right. some takeaways from that ball game. Yeah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's right. You know, that's all it comes down to. You know, why would you need to, to throw the ball when we, we did what we did? You know, we rushed for 422 yards. But um, looking back at some of the stats, you know, with our kids, we've got three kids in our district right now from Huntsville that are in the top ten in rushing. Okay. Two of them or our running backs, and one of them is our quarterback, you know. So that, that adds another element to what we're able to do. So, you know, Austin was just as much part of that, you know, running, you know, in that game. Uh, you know, our, uh, I think we only passed for five, 
times, five, five attempts, you know, and it's just at times that we needed it. And we, you know, we, we'd like to be more successful in those attempts, of course, uh, but uh, to be able to get third down situations where it's third and long or whatever, you know, to be able to complete it. And, uh, but, you know, uh, when you only have to pass for five times and you run for 45 times for 422 yards, good things are happening. That's right. So. Coach, what in your tenure here in Huntsville, what is the biggest lesson you learned so far as a coach? The biggest lesson? Uh, I think it's, it's building relationships with kids, you know, and coaches. Uh, spending that time with them, un understanding the, the young men that you work with in their backgrounds and, you know, what, and how you can work with them and, and things you can do with them, things you can't do with them, you know, because all the kids respond. So, and I've learned that through, of course, you know, my years of coaching. I've learned that from, from coaches that I've, I've worked with. And, you know, you just you build that into your philosophy as a coach. Uh, but that's, that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned. And once you understand a kid, it, it makes things go so much easier and how they learn and, and how they work and how they respond to, you know, you're, you're working with them and, you know, uh, not criticizing them, but, you know, you know, teaching them the game. You know, everybody learns different. You know, you, you, you learn that. So, but, yeah, that's the biggest thing, probably so. Coach, looking ahead, West Fork this week, different kind of feel because it's a team that is fresh to varsity in their first year. Just some thoughts on the Gators. Yeah, we, we prepare, you know, we started preparing a little bit last week and, and – uh, Last week was, of course, our bye week, and we also spent a lot of time making corrections and working on things that we needed to, to work on. Work to, work to be perfect, you know, if we can, you know, but we, we work to uh, – we work until we get it right with our, whatever we're doing. But looking at West Fork, they're, they're a young football team. You know, it's their first year of varsity football, uh, and we're going to plan for them just like we would any other team that we're getting ready to play. We're not, we're not going to look past them. We're going to – Spend that time, you know, in our film, like we do with our quarterbacks and all of our all our athletes, and uh, and prepare for them because our ultimate goal is to be one and zero for that week that's coming. And it's the way it should be. I've asked. Uh, so we've had Scott Schroeder and Amori Del Real on the show prior to you in our coaches spotlight. Now I'm going to ask you this because I feel like it, it, it's a different perspective every single time from every different coach. You know, um, you know, your wife Tammy is here with us in the house tonight. Just in your coaching journey. I mean, you got your kids here too, in mm -hmm. Jalen and Jace. Just in your coaching journey, what has family meant to you? Oh, it's everything. You know, it's 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 why I do what I do, and uh, just to have the support from my family and knowing, you know, games. You know, coming home whether win or loss, that they're there. You know, with us, they've got our back. Because a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> in the coaching profession, you don't have. And this might sound bad, but. Uh, we don't have many friends that we can really go to, talk to uh, within our, you know, outside of our coaching profession. You know, I can do that with the coaches that I work with and, and spend time with, but I've all, my, I know that my family always has our back and what we do. Uh, I mean, you can ask my wife when she was the mom of the quarterback when he was out there playing on the field, and, and she stood up for, for our kids, you know, not just, not just Jay's, but all our kids in our program. And, and uh and, you know, my kids grew up around football. My wife probably knows more football than, you know, I do. And, uh, my, my, uh, she gets – she's old school. She's, she's old school when it comes to it because you can hear her from the stands. <laughs> so, but uh, – and then uh, Jace's girlfriend, she's, she's all involved in it now. And she's, she's fired up about that. And uh, – She's always asking questions when we're watching games on Sundays or Saturday afternoons. And, and, uh, but, yeah, family. Family it means so much to me, you know, because uh, we live the life of football. And to have them by my side going with this, you know, through that with me is, uh, is an awesome thing. Amen, brother. Brian? What, uh, Coach, what is your favorite memory since you've been a coach here? I know you had <clears throat> one of probably the coolest things ever having uh, the ability to coach your son at quarterback. Well, I didn't coach him. You weren't quarterback coach at that time. I was not. That's right. I was not. So that's why he was a quarterback. I was a receiver's coach because <laughs> he didn't want to play receiver. <laughs> so, Jace, man, I'm trying to help you, dude. Sorry. So. <laughs> but, no, uh, 
And I remember his his junior year. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of good memories, but you know, since you you put him in my head, it, the first time when we were playing Walter at home, his junior year, I remember the first time of him running out onto the field as the starting quarterback for the Huntsville Hornets, and me being a part of you know that program for so long, and to be able to see that and just have that feeling, that was that was a pretty awesome you know moment. Uh, and then in you know his his. Uh, his senior year uh, going in after he came back from his injury and everything, and we played Mag West you know, for the district championship. And just that feeling after that game, you know, and, and, and seeing the success of not just my son, but, you know, the, the, our team and what we've done and, you know, where we were to bring that uh, first district championship, you know, Coach Southern his, and as a head coach here in Huntsville. You know, that was, that was a pretty awesome night. Well, Coach. As always, we appreciate you, everything yeah. you do. And you, you do great stuff, not not just on the football field, but in the high school and just in everything you do. So on behalf of Chick-fil-A and us here at KSAM, we have a gift for you. It's going to hook me up. And a token, yes, absolutely. Right. <laughs> a token of our appreciation to it. Thank you for your time. Right. And y'all give it up for, uh, for quarterbacks coach Jason right. Elliott. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, coach. We'll step aside and take a break. Our teacher spotlight is coming up next. Mrs. Heather Schroeder joins us next on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. There's nothing sweeter than a baby's giggle. <laughs> Fill your Wednesdays and smiles for miles at toddler time from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. at Chick-fil-A of Huntsville. Bring your two to five-year-olds for crafts and guest appearances. It's toddler time every Wednesday morning at 9.30 only at Chick-fil-A Huntsville. Find out more on the Chick-fil-A of Huntsville Facebook page or through the events calendar on the Chick-fil-A Huntsville website. See you there. Your brand is your business. Shop local with Advantage Specialties where you will get service with a personal touch. Hello, I'm Stephanie Pitts, owner and operator of Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties offers screen printing and embroidery on site. Let Advantage Specialties get you ready for your next event with cups, apparel, caps, pins, and everything else you could need. Go to AdvantageSpecialties.com or call our team at 936-291-3222 to start that order now. Sing them Hornets! And we welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Chick-fil-A of Huntsville for the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. Glad to have you with us tonight. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. With me is Brian Adams. And before we introduce our next guest, uh, my friend Emma here is going to show the people what we are giving away at the end of the show tonight. Well, the, first off, for background, these shirts will be given away at the Red, White, and Blue Night on November the 8th against Splendora in the season finale. So we have our wheel here somewhere. I don't know what Tim did with it. There it is over there. So uh, you can put your name in the hat for a chance to win the shirt tonight we have two we are going to give away at the end of the show and remember if you do win the shirt wear it to the ball game on november the 8th it's a beautiful shirt i don't know if i'm going to get one <laughs> well it is gonna... a beautiful shirt though yes it is yeah i'm thank i want to thank uh, advantage specialties and chick-fil-a and <laughs> all our friends at the Huntsville hornet football quarterback club for uh, making that shirt possible all right joining us now in our teacher spotlight y'all give it up for mrs heather schroeder Heather, how are you, ma'am? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for coming on. So, as this is your first time here on the show, just introduce yourself to those listening and uh, what you do at Huntsville High School. Yeah, I'm Heather Schroeder. I teach U.S. History, which is a junior class. Um, I'm the department chair for social studies, and I work pretty closely with our foreign exchange students as well. Awesome. A lot of hats. That is a lot of hats. <laughs> do us a favor and explain to us and the audience that's listening what got you into teaching. What was that moment that you decided that was what you wanted to do for your career? Well, I did not go to school to be a teacher. Um, my undergrad was sociology. I knew I wanted to work with people somehow. Um, but after I started my family, I stayed home and raised my four kids, and I was home for 14 years. Um, when we moved to Texas is when I started working outside the home. I was working as a um, like an instructional aid in a, a classroom in Belton and you know it was hard we had four kids and pretty much one teacher salary because I wasn't making very much and it was really kind of a, a necessity for you know feeding our family 
So I, I did an alternative certification program and actually figured out that that was my calling. Nice. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So U.S. History, Department Chair for Social Studies, and you work a lot with the foreign exchange students. Mm -hmm. How do you balance all that? <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of late nights. Mm, a lot of complaining when I get home. <laughs> Pretty much, that's it. Okay, there you go. Uh, what about U.S. history just intrigues you? And you said it's just a, a juniors only class? Yes. So what intrigues you about that? Um, well, this class, uh, so Texas students take U.S. history in eighth grade, right. which just goes up to the Civil War. And then their junior year, they do, it's post-Civil War up to the modern era. So it's very... Um, relatable things because there's actual videos of these things. It's not just paintings in a textbook or something, so it's very relatable. The kids tend to find U.S. history because it's more modern. They, they find it more interesting, so they're more engaged in it. And um, it's just a story, and I'm just the storyteller. So There you go. I mean, that's kind of our job, storytelling at it the is. end of the day. Yeah, really. Um, the foreign exchange students, I wanted to highlight that mm -hmm. because I would remembered you told me about that before and I didn't list it in my questions, but I want to talk about that. How did you get involved with doing that and just talk about your experiences doing that because when it comes to foreign exchange students, I mean, it's a huge shift. Mm -hmm. New culture, yeah. new homes. Yeah. Talk about that. So I've always had a lot of exchange students in my classes and I just really developed a heart for them. Um, I loved learning about their culture and where they're from and they're always you know, very good students, and they, they're here to learn, and they really want to learn, so it's, it's easy to teach them. Um, and a couple years ago, I just felt like they were sort of getting lost in the shuffle. Uh, you'd see them dropped off on the first day of school with, you know, some of them have limited English. Most of them speak pretty good English, but, um, like, our school's way bigger than anything that they've ever been a part of, and I really wanted to um, sort of bridge a gap and help get them acclimated to school and also bring them together with the Huntsville High students to kind of have that cultural exchange. So um, I just started like planning activities outside of school that they could invite their friends to and um, just sort of kind of take them under my wing. And uh, it was something I think that was needed and we now have a class. It's, um, it's more like a study hall but it's just for the exchange students and it's first period so they sort of can get all their questions answered, or who do I see about this, and you know, where do I turn this in, and so it's been really good, and we have a lot of fun. It's awesome. Yeah. Heather, if there's somebody out there listening to this right now, and they're contemplating getting into the teaching field, mm -hmm. what advice would you give that person? Um, it's got a lot of challenges, but it's very rewarding. Um, I, I had a situation happen, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but since you asked that question, um, we lost our dog last Monday, mm -hmm. so and sorry. really heartbreaking, but um, I had two students today that presented me with gifts, and it was just out of the blue, and those are the things that happen that you go, okay, this is why I do it, because you're making those connections with them, you're making relationships with them, and when I knew that I was going to work with people, I didn't know it would be teaching, but teaching is just sort of the cover for working with, with young people and trying to make a difference in their life. So it's, it's very rewarding. It's awesome. Four kids. Mm -hmm. Did you get to teach all of them at one point, or was it just no, no, the younger no. three? No, no, no. I didn't teach any of them. None of them? No. <laughs> why, why is it my lap? No. <laughs> they weren't in my class. <laughs> okay. And if they would have showed up on my roster, that would be a big no. No. <laughs> Understood. No. <laughs> Understood. Well, I want to highlight one of your one of your boys okay. here real quick, uh, Mr. Cole, mm -hmm. who is at Augustana, yes. which is in Illinois, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Rock Island, Illinois. Were you there this weekend? I wasn't there, but okay. we have family there, so they were feeding me all the videos. Gotcha, gotcha. I was there a couple weeks ago. Okay, because I had saw the videos on your, on your uh, Facebook feed. Yeah. But uh, one thing me and Brian, over the years of me and him doing the ball games and watching Cole when he was on varsity, we were, we, he was the kick returner mm -hmm. and the punt returner for us. So we were like, one of these days, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Well, I never saw it. Ha we never saw it happen at the high school level. But this weekend, he returned a punt at Augustana. Or was it kick a kickoff? Kick off, yeah. kick return at Augustana. Yeah. How exciting was that for you? Oh, man. Um, they were sending me videos. His first two kickoff returns were nice, nice returns to like, you know, the 40 or 50. And then they sent me one and didn't tell me anything about it. So I just, I opened it up and he took it 90 yards. Hey, man, so. let's hear it. <laughs> it was, 90 yeah. yards. Very exciting. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It's 
awesome. I love Pr that. Proud mama moment for love sure. That. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we never got to see it, but. But it we happened. sure want to. Oh, believe see me, it. I'll believe post it all. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I hear you. Oh yeah. Well, Heather, on behalf of us and Chick Fil A, we appreciate everything you do mm -hmm. on a regular basis for every student's lives that that you touch. This is why we have this segment because I, we we feel like and Coach Southern feel like you know sometimes teachers don't get that recognition that they absolutely deserve. So we appreciate everything yeah, you do. Thank and, you for having me. And Chick Fil A. If I can reach it here without falling over, uh, has a special Thank gift you. for you uh, as a token of their appreciation for what you do. Thank you very much. Y'all give it up me. for Heather Schroeder tonight. Thank you. All right. All right. Coming up after this quick message from our friends at KSAM, we have our first player joining us tonight. And I have the two of them sitting here in front of us here. So who do we go with first? Uh, BPJ. Let's go with him. Brian Parker Jr. joins us next on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. up every morning with Brian and Tracy. Tomorrow it's two for Tuesday on the KCM Wake Up Morning Show and we have back to back Chris Jansen at 640. We'll get you out the door with local weather every 10 minutes. Larry Crippen has local news, sports from Carlos and Paws and Claws at 820. Start your day with us tomorrow morning at 6. The KCM Wake Up Morning Show. Rise and shine morning glories. Weekdays from 6 to 10 on 101.7 KSAM. And we welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. With me is Brian Adams. Joining us now in our players spotlight first from the offensive line, the trenches, senior number 70, Brian Parker, Jr. Y'all give it up for BP. <laughs> Brian, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Glad to have you here once again. All right, senior season. How do you feel so far? Uh, it's going good so far. What, uh, what's been exciting about it for you? Uh, all the rushing yards. All the rushing yards, yes. That's the, that's the best answer you can get from your offensive line is cheering for those running backs. I love that, B.A. Bear with me. This is kind of a long question. As one of the leaders on the offensive line, what did you work on individually the most so that you were able to help your teammates? I wrote that question. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just making sure – I know what I know my job is, so I can help everybody else know what their job is, too. So we all are just one good collective unit. Forgive my ignorance, because I can never see it in the moment when we're, watch, when we're calling the games. Your left guard? Right guard. Correct. Right guard. Okay, I had guard right, but right guard. And but you were also a center at one point, too, right? Yes, sir. I started yeah. off the year last year at center. That's right. Okay. So okay. Talk about that transition, moving away from the ball and now being on that right side of the O-line. Uh, it's a little less to worry about every play having to send a ball between your legs to someone back there and then block someone that's probably bigger than me. That's true. That is very true. Uh, you guys had an impressive performance against Cedar Park, just opened up the running lanes for the running backs. Just what excited you about that besides the rushing yards? Uh, well, we were all just having fun up front. You get to run downfield and celebrate in the end zone with your running backs, knowing that you helped create the holes that got them the touchdown. Where do you feel like you guys as a unit can continue to improve, especially with districts starting this week? Uh, probably just communication, communicating a little more better, knowing what we're all doing at one time. Let, let me ask you, That's a, I was thinking about that. How much communicating, because <clears throat> I know these people in the audience, they have no idea. How much communicating goes on between the offensive line on every play? Uh, well, before every play, we got to know if we're doubling with each other, know who's OEO, who's by themselves. And who's who's got what back, and we don't run into each other. Are you going guys to the second level? Are you guys yelling that to each other as you approach the line? Yeah, well, as soon as we, well, we're usually next to each other. As soon as we get to play, we look at each other and just look at each other and talk about who we got and where we're going. That's awesome. Carlos and I were talking about. He asked me something about you know different quarterbacks under centers and this and that the other night. And the continuity is what I think about. You know, and if you're not on the same page, you're going to have a problem. Yes, sir. Communication is huge. Very cool. Let me ask you this. He's in the house tonight, your offensive line coach, Coach uh, Justin St. Remain. How you doing, Coach? He pushes you guys hard in practice. How do I know? When I'm out there in practice, he is driving home everything he needs to. <laughs> we got some agreeing here from your teammates over here. Uh, just uh, what does he say in those, you know, that position meeting with you guys just that helps you guys the most? Uh, just fighting through practice, making sure we get everything out of it that way games are easier and just that 
we always we always got to know what we're doing. Right. Don't ever go up there blind. Where do you draw your inspiration on and off the field every day? Uh, my family. I want to do it all for my family, make them proud. I know that all the, all the hours they put into me is going to pay off one day. And you also kind of get to work closely with your dad, is that right? Yes, sir. And your dad's the head trainer and the – the for the for the Hornets, yes, correct? Sir. Yeah, head, head athletic trainer. Yeah, what's that like? Uh, Being around your dad every day. I mean, it's good and bad. <laughs> There's good things and bad things about it. I want to highlight the good. What's good about it? I'm not going to ask about the bad. <laughs> uh, it's just you get to see him every day. Does he tell you just to get back out there and don't worry about it? Uh, <laughs> uh, no. it's a little bit of both. Depends <laughs> on what it is. Nah, there you okay. go. Okay. Okay. Uh, Looking at West Fork, uh, obviously this is this is different, but you've seen this before. I mean, with Randall, with them moving up uh, in varsity, so you see another team like that. Just uh, what what are you looking forward to about playing West Fork this week? Uh, we got th this game will really test our communication up front with how much they bounce in and out of an even and odd front, and knowing where we're going and how we're going to get there. That's good, Brian. That is good. Um, what is your favorite football memory? So far to this point. Rand the Randall game in the playoffs. Mm. And why is that? I know it was a good good victory and all, but for you personally, why? Uh, I feel like that was one of my better games, personally. I had a lot of – we had a uh, – it tested us as a group. It tested us as a group physically and mentally, knowing we had to stay locked in for the whole 48 minutes of the game. Were you at the right – were you at right guard for that ball game? If I, you was remember at, I was at left guard that game. You were left guard for that game. So I played everything. All that. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you did. Yeah, I think so. All over the place. Oh, yeah. Now, you are a two-sport athlete. Yes, sir. You play baseball for the Hornets as well. You've had some big moments. I, I believe me, I know because Colin keep, kept sharing the clips with me from the big hits you had in those ball games. Just, uh, I know you're focused on football right now, but what are you excited about for fo uh, baseball in the spring? Uh, new district. Going to face some some good competition in district that'll really test us. I mean, you got to face Lake Creek, mm -hmm. Montgomery, College Station, it's all. Other schools that have been historically good, and you got to go out there and just compete. Who are you looking forward to most? Uh, Montgomery. Montgomery. I, got, I had a couple of kids I've grown up with. Ah, so I okay. just want to play them. So play them and beat them, obviously. Yes, there sir. you go. If you could flip yourself to the defensive line, would you do it? No. Why not? O line's best position. O line. Why is that? Why? Oh, because you get to hit people every play, and you know what you. <laughs> We, I know which way I'm going. They don't know which way I'm going until mm. the ball is snapped. Sneaky, sneaky. I like that. Uh, now, are you your first base for baseball? Yes, is, sir. Is there another spot you'd want to be on on the field? No? No, I'm good. No. I'm he's, good where I'm at. He's, he is content where he is, and that's okay. I that is that. okay. BA. You know, the cool thing about the O-line, you got to have them. They're the most important position, in my opinion, because without the O-line, you have nothing. So Actually, ignore that question. We yeah. already asked him. Uh, next question. <laughs> you actually talked about it a little bit ago. Having your dad on the sidelines with you, that's got to be a pretty cool experience. How how is that, having your dad there with you? Uh, it's cool. We get to share all the moments together, the highs and the lows. So sometimes I know if I miss the block or something, I'll come on the sideline, I'm going to look at him and know that I, I messed up. But it's just cool to have him on the sideline. It's good. It's good. Uh, I, I'm friends with your mom on Facebook, and she sh shared a photo that, uh, you you know, you were over the weekend, you were supporting your sister, McKenna, and uh, she's about getting ready to jump on, on to uh, softball this next year. Just talk about that experience together growing up and just uh, being able to, you know, build off of each other despite, you know, being a couple of years apart. Well, yeah, but, I mean, she grew up watching me play. So, and I'm getting to be the, on the reverse side of going to all her games and she always went to all of mine. That's good. So it's just a little back and forth. We're switching roles now. And do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's way more fun to play in the heat than sit there and watch it. Uh, I, I feel that. I feel that. Uh, senior year, so plans for after it. You know what you want to do yet? Uh, go to college and play football. All right. There you go. Do you have a dream school? Uh, right now, probably Tarleton. Tarleton. The Texans. I think there's a former Hornet on the Texans right now, Dylan Brooks. Yes. He's playing for Tarleton right now. Yes, he is. All right, Brian, before we let you go, do you have a message out there for Hornet Nation uh, ahead of this district game on Thursday, the district opener? Start us something special. All right, start us something special. Mark it down in the books right now. And do you have anybody you want to give a big shout-out to before we let you go? Uh, my dad who's here and then my mom and my sister and my family that are watching. All right, there you go. Y'all give it up for Brian Parker, Jr. from the O-line. Good job, Brian.
We'll step aside and take a break. We'll bring on one of his teammates on the offensive line. Bubba Moreno joins us next on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on low lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Man, I loved playing high school sports growing up. And it's fun being a fan now, don't get me wrong, but sitting in the stands feels like I'm missing out on all the action, you know? I wanted to get back in the game, so I signed up to be a high school official. It takes me back to my playing days. I'm supporting students, and I get paid to make the big calls. Do you want to see the game up close? Sign up to become an official in Texas at HighSchoolOfficials.com. Hi, my name is Masalio Marino, offensive line for the Huntsville Hornets, and you're listening to the Hornet Nation Coaches Show on KSM. Sting of Hornets. And we welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. As we continue along here tonight, we are halfway through the show. It is 7.30 here at the bottom of the hour, so I want to remind you guys that to put your entries in to win one of the two shirts that we are giving away here at the end of the night. Again, they are going to be worn uh, and given away on November the 8th in the season finale against Splendor for the red, white, and blue game. So if you haven't already put your name in the hat, do it. We are going to be drawing the name here uh, about 25, 27 minutes, so stay tuned for that. All right, joining us now here in our continued players spotlight, junior offensive lineman. Y'all give it up for number 75. I'm not going to try and botch this. Las Lalio Bubba Moreno joining us tonight. Is that good? Better than the first time. Okay. <laughs> well, you're improving. So there we go. We're trying our best here. <laughs> All right. Bubba, I'll call you that for, for this segment. Uh, just talk about the season so far from your perspective there on the O-line. Uh, it's been pretty good so far. This is my first year on varsity, so some things are new to me, but most of it I already knew because I've been trying to like keep up with the varsity. Even though I've been on the JV level, I've always tried to be a part with the varsity, even though I was never fully part of them. But I've always just tried to stay and be a part of it. Good. At what point in time did you decide that football was going to be your, your sport? Ever since I was little. I used to think, I don't know if it, it might have been like four or five. My mom, she didn't know, but I can't remember. Started off Little League in New Waverly, went to Willis, and then came here for Man's Park. So it's been my whole life, and it's been a thing I've stuck with. That's awesome. How was that when you put on the uniform first for Man's Park in your, you know, first, you know, I would try to find the word for it, but just really the first, you know, big action. I didn't football. know if I was going to be any good at it because I was real small. I've grown a lot. I was 5'3", five, 5'4", five, in eighth grade, eighth, or 7th and 8th grade. I was never too big. But I made the A team in uh, Man's Park. So that kind of, like, inspired me to keep playing and just know that size isn't the only thing that matters. Like, if I have heart and intensity and just go to drive, I can be pretty good at it. I feel like if every player adopted that mantra, you know, you'd all, you'd all be playing in the NFL one day. <laughs> Absolutely. That's good. All right, this is kind of a loaded question. I, I felt loaded questions today. <laughs> Do you feel that your on-field performance gives you a boost in the classroom to perform well? Not really. I think it's the other way around. Okay. Because if I'm doing bad in school, it kind of just messes with me because I like to keep my grades up high because it's my parents, and then I show at the Walker County Fair. So it, the grades are the first thing to me. How, so you would say academics is a big thing for you? Yeah. Why is that? Just because I know grades can take you a long way and get you into college. That's what most coaches look at now, so you got to keep them high. That's good. Do you have a favorite subject in school in particular that you enjoy? The core classes? Probably, I wouldn't like any of them, but if I had to choose one, it'd be English probably, just because it's easy. Okay. Uh, what about outside of football, extracurricular? I do welding for the high school. I just went to a building, comp or a build off. We build things like at competitions. We got third there. Awesome. Well, and cool. then I show at the Walker County Fair. I do steers and turkeys there. Okay. We'll talk more about that here in a second, BA. What, uh, to this point, what's your favorite? Football memory up, up to now? I have a whole bunch, but I, a lot of them are when I just see I'm blocking somebody and then I turn around and see my running back just running. Those are all my favorite memories, just run, seeing them run to the touchdown. I just love that feeling and that memories They stick in me real good. What do you feel like is the most nerve-wracking thing for you when you step up to the line 
Because you play center, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, what do you feel is the most nerve-wracking? I never really get too nervous. When I get nervous, I get in my head, and it messes me up. So I try and stay calm when I'm up there and just do what I've been told to do and what I've learned. So I never try and get too nervous. How's it been adapting to that center role on the offensive line? Because it's, it, it's, it's a big one. I mean, you, yeah. you, you mess up, the ball's going all over the place. Yeah. I, started, I started at Center Man's Park, so that's helped me. But this past, or this, this past year, I was a real big leader on the JV level. But at the beginning of the varsity level, or Lufkin, I wasn't really like a leader. I was just trying to like get to, to get to know the game at, at that certain level. But now I just see me as trying to like step up just because I know the position better and I'm able to help out other people. Yeah, that's a cool thing because that position is the leadership on the line. Yeah. And they're counting on you for the, the right calls and things like that. So Bubba, what, uh, what does a day in the life look like? For you? I um, usually wake up at 5, and I go feed my steers, and then I go inside, get ready, go to school, and then go to athletics, and then go to class, and come back to practice, and go mess with my animals again after. And then go back to sleep. Yep. Sounds like a good day. <laughs> Full rich day, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Lot. That is a lot. Uh, where do you feel like you gain the most inspiration in your life? What do you mean by that? Like, just, like, who inspires you? Probably my parents, because they do a lot for me. With everything I do inside and outside of school, they do plenty enough, and I'm thankful for what they do. And it just, what they do, it kind of just drives me to give them more. That makes sense, yeah. Do you have any, outside of, you know, showing at the Walker County Fair, Mm -hmm. and then football, obviously, is there any other hobbies that you enjoy doing? I like to fish. I I haven't really been been into big and hunting, but I want to get way more of that. Mm -hmm. So I like doing that. Talk to this guy. <laughs> He's a hunter. We like to hunt. That's You'll right. Love it. You'll That's love right. it. Uh, so looking ahead, looking at West Fork, I mean, opening district, <clears throat> what's exciting for you there, especially after a great performance against Cedar Park? First district game, and then you love to have a start of the district after beating a team that good just that by that big of a score. So it's kind of it, – it's helped me. It's giving us more – not inspiration, but – more, f- not fo- I can't think of the right word, but it just helps us. Or it helps us know that we're on the right track to beat these other district teams. We're doing something good. Yeah, you got a lot of your teammates right over, literally right here in the packed in this corner over here. I mean, the trenches are really tight, and they're all packed tight over here. So I guess that makes sense. But just talk about the uh, the chemistry that you guys have been able to build over this season and in past years too. I've had a lot of chemistry with the twins you had on last week because they we've all been or with one, the one Caleb. He was on the O line. So I had a lot of chemistry with him. Eli, he just switched over, but I've still been around with them for a while because they're twins. Can't be with one and not the other. <laughs> and then the rest of them, Caleb, this is my first year really with him because he didn't play his, or, that last year because of something. And then Trey, I've played with him for a while since eighth, gr- seventh grade. BP, this is, I consider this my second year playing with him. Everybody else, it's just real easy to get along with them because they're all – real friendly not when it comes to game time they're, they're locked different. in yeah but you get you can get along with them pretty easy that's good <laughs> what does what with the you know the camaraderie you have and you've known these guys a long time and i know y'all are buds on and off the field what is the what is the what is the feeling like in the locker room when you know you have your best friends right beside you mm-hmm. what is that confidence level like it's amazing because I'm playing with some of the best people that I know that play football that are in the same locker room, and we know that we have an ability to go do something real good. So it's just good to see them every day and build that chemistry with them. That's awesome. You guys have something special going on for sure. Absolutely. The whole, the whole team. Working hard. Yeah. Uh, Bubba, let me ask you this. Um, when it comes to football itself, are you a big college football guy? Are you a big NFL guy? Or are you just, you know – I used to be more in the NFL, but I, I just haven't been really into it. I've been in more college now. Okay. Who do you like to watch? A&M, but they're not doing too very well. So, I've been watching some DJ Lagway. Oh, out in Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's been doing pretty good. Yeah, he has been doing pretty good. Um, do you like traveling for the road games, or do you prefer to be the kind of guy that's just like, I love playing in front of my home fans? I like traveling on a charter bus. I don't like being on the Yellow Dogs. <laughs> Don't like it. So uh, Coach C- Southern? So <laughs> Cedar Park was fun. Yeah, that, that was fun. They were comfortable seats. This Thursday may not. <laughs> That's one thing I'm not looking forward to, drive. 
in those yellow dog, those seats are very comfortable. Well, see, th- that's my thing. I, I hate waiting for the games because you just want to get out there and get going, so I understand. Um, you show for the Walker County Fair, yeah. and that's going to be coming up here uh, up in the next year. Just uh, what are you looking forward to on that show and steers? And I'm looking forward to winning another buckle because top one and top two, you get a buckle, and that's what I look the money, yeah, because it helps me with the next year because I'd use that to buy another animal so it can help me and buy the feed. But the buckle just means something because it shows that you put in the work to be able to show the judges that you deserve that buckle. Do you have a favorite memory from your time showing at the fair? Not really because my sister, I don't, she has better luck with me. She's always gotten higher place than me. So she's gotten most of the buckles. But this past year I got um, – I did scramble heifer. Or I think it was two years ago, and I got two buckles for that, for being the top hand, which was just helping around the most at the fair, and then for being, uh, what was it, uh, showman, having like being able to help mess with, like uh, walk, show my animal the best. It's awesome. Well, I'm gonna have to make my way out there whenever you guys are out there and watch you do your thing, man. That's so cool. Do you have a message for Hornet Nation coming up for this Thursday ball game? Uh, just what BP says. Some start of something special. Be ready. All right, there you go. Anybody you want to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Uh, parent, my parents, Coach Schroeder, Coach Saint, Coach Hilger. He's been with me for since my freshman year. We both started at high, high school. Caesar, haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> and Coach Southern for everything he does. There you go. Pretty much it. Y'all give it up for Bubba Moreno joining us tonight. Thanks for coming on, man. All right, we'll step aside and take a break. And in our final segment, we will bring on the head honcho and head coach Rodney Southern on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show after this. There's nothing sweeter than a baby's giggle. (laughs) Fill your Wednesdays and smiles for miles at toddler time from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. at Chick-fil-A of Huntsville. Bring your two to five-year-olds for crafts and guest appearances. It's toddler time every Wednesday morning at 9.30 only at Chick-fil-A Huntsville. Find out more on the Chick-fil-A of Huntsville Facebook page or through the events calendar on the Chick-fil-A Huntsville website. See you there. Don't get stung having the wrong insurance coverage. Switch to AIM Agencies. AIM Agencies reviews your needs, then researches quality independent insurance providers to secure you affordable, dependable protection for your home, car, or boat. And here's the best part. You'll work with a real person who listens and will help you protect what's important. It's easy to stop overpaying. Contact David Beatty today at AIM Agencies for local personal service. AIM Agencies, the right coverage at the right price. AIMAgencies.com. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show as we continue along here on this Monday night, wherever you may be. Glad to have you here. If you're in-house here at Chick-fil-A or listening on 101.7 KSAM, I know there's people out there looking for the stream. We were having tech issues before the ballgame, but we are before the show. We are recording it, though, and we'll upload, upload the show at a later time. All right, joining us now, y'all give it up for head coach Rodney Souther. Come on. <laughs> coach, how are you, sir? I'm very good. Glad to have you, as always. All right, it's been a little bit since we've had the chance to chat with you, so just a quick look back at Cedar Park and now looking ahead to West Fork. Well, obviously, the, the Cedar Park game, you know, the, the travel, everything we talked about a couple of weeks ago, um, I thought our kids handled it extremely well. We drove from here to Hutto, uh, stopped and got out and kind of just did a quick little walk through on their one of their practice fields. And then <clears throat> when we got to Cedar Park, we actually got there about – two minutes within the time we wanted to be there. Uh, and and sometimes people don't understand all the things that go into getting 75 people there and all your stuff there and trying to be on time and not knowing what traffic's going to be like and all those kind of things. And then, you know, obviously the first quarter of that ball game was probably, you know, in my 11 years here, that might have been one of the best quarters of football that we've played in all three phases. Our kicking game was really good. Obviously, you scored 24 points on a team that had just beat a 6A team in overtime. And Cedar Park, historically, has been a really good football program. And I think we shocked them the first quarter. And then I think <clears throat> through the process, we handled the, the second quarter when they scored two real quick. We handled that momentum shift that you've got to be able to handle. and. Uh, and then, of course, we got to play a bunch of guys late in the game and uh, didn't get anybody hurt, which is always critical coming out of there and go, <clears throat> excuse me, going into your open week. Uh, 
West Fork's kind of unique. Um, you know, anytime you've got a program that's just getting started, you really don't know till you snap the first ball what's going to happen. Uh, they're unique offensively. They're running a lot of option stuff. I think it's kind of a cross between a, uh, what people call a slot T now and, and a little bit of option stuff. And, and I think that creates a <clears throat> totally different dynamic for you defensively. So that's something that's good for us uh, now and down the road. Uh, defensively, uh, I, I think they're – a team that we hope we can do what we've been doing, which obviously if we can run the football like we've been running it, we're going to be hard to handle with anybody. Uh, but uh, to be able to do that, but we've also got to get better throwing the football because at some point we're going to face a team that can can keep us in check running the ball and we got to be able to throw it. Hey, Coach, <coughs> talking about running the ball, the ground game absolutely dominated the night. What was the big takeaway from the running backs in that game? Well, I, I told Treshawn after the game, uh, I, I thought he did some things in the second level of their defense that I haven't seen him do. His vision was probably as good uh, as I have seen with him in the time he's been with us. Uh, Zay is a different type of running back, uh, but I think everybody that carried the ball got positive yards. Austin uh, had a good night, and I think like uh, – Jason mentioned earlier, you know, if you take our th two running backs or three running backs and our quarterback right now, we're leading the district in rushing. Uh, so, but one of the reasons why I wanted to bring the O-line tonight is the fact that between the O-line and Jerry Singletary, our tight end, <clears throat> you know, because we're not the biggest, we're not going to be, may not be the strongest, but, you know, you hear guys and listen to them talk about O-linemen. O-linemen are just a different breed of people. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I love hanging around old linemen because they really don't care what people think sometimes. They're going to eat when they get a chance to eat. Uh, they love riding on charter buses, and <laughs> they want to know what we're eating when we get off the bus. But uh, but I thought that that group of kids, between our backs and our quarterback and Jarius and our old linemen, I, I thought was probably one of the best just – consistent blocking nights that we've had since I've been here. One of the things I saw <clears throat> that I haven't seen in a long time, and each one of them I think did it, and they did a great job of cut back, going one way and then cutting back as that defense just went blowing on by them. Where, where did that – is that something y'all been well, working on? Or is that I mean, just... you know, you'd love to say all that's coaching, but some of that's just God-given ability. But I thought Treshawn, and I told him – uh, that Saturday morning, I, I said I didn't see some of the things that he saw. Now, probably from the press box, you could probably see it. But from ground level, uh, especially when he's on their sideline, you don't see some of those things and you wonder why. You know, if the play's designed to cut back, that's one thing. But there's a couple plays in that game that he went against the grain. Zay does it um, almost naturally. Uh, but Treshawn, I thought, took a major step the other night, and I thought our blocking was uh, as consistent because if you can run the football, it makes throwing it easier, uh, especially play action. And, and like Jason said the other night, we didn't have to throw it. And when you – you know, the old saying years ago, when you throw it, there's three things that can happen and two of them are bad. So uh, – when you can turn around and hand the ball to guys and you can depend on your old line to make – make just give them a crease. You don't have to make a hole anymore. Just give them a crease to get through. And, and I thought we've done that. We need to do that again Thursday night. How do you look to get the passing game going <clears throat> here in the district play? Well, you just got to keep repping it. You know, we spent a lot of time last week throwing the ball. Um, we spent some time last week on West Fork, uh, obviously having that extra time and – Knowing we miss or we technically lose a day this week, so today technically for us is a Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow morning will be a Tuesday morning. <laughs> tomorrow afternoon is Wednesday afternoon for us. Uh, so you have to kind of mentally prepare yourself for that. But but at the same time, you know, you, and you can look at every level. And of course, I probably shouldn't say this. Ask the Cowboys. Um, if you could run the football, you'd win a lot of football games, and they can't run the football. So uh, we're going to run the football, and we're going to be good at it. But 
we've got to make some of those chunk plays throwing the ball to keep that extra safety or that extra person out of the box. But again, you know, if you can run it like we're running it right now, especially having four backs that can do different things, uh, it just creates, I, I know listening to what people are saying about us outside in social media, you know, a lot of people don't want to play us because they know we can run the football. Coach, what uh, <clears throat> what similarities do you see between West Fork and a team like Richmond Randall who used to be in the district with uh, that made a similar transition? What do you what do you well, see? Well, I, I think that probably the transition would be uh, Lamar Fulcher uh, when we played Fulcher the first couple years, and then you know they just exploded growth wise. They're a little closer to I think the type of kid that uh, West Fork's got. You know, they pulled from whichever New Caney schools that they technically pulled from. Um, I, I think they're just, uh, uh, they're a school that, you know, when you get to that first year of varsity, uh, a, a new program, well, there's so many unknown variables that you just don't know. You don't know, you know, we haven't seen them JV-wise. We haven't seen them freshman-wise. So you don't know what they really are, you know, like their quarterback and number one, to me, is their best football player, and, and he's dangerous. What they do offensively scares you because you wake up and one misstep and you look the wrong way and the guy's 20 yards down the field and you're chasing him. So those kind of things scare you. But to me, they're probably a little more like a full sure uh, just because of the type of kids they have. Coach, one thing I talked about recently <laughs> with uh, Sam Houston's head coach, Casey Keeler, was discipline. And I wanted to bring that up here with you because, you know, you have one of the most disciplined teams, I'd argue, in the state with the way they, you know, just stay locked in on what's important. Just how do they continue that going into district play? Well, I, I think that's, you know, you look at that in practice. And, and I started this the day I became a head coach, which was a long time ago now. <laughs> Uh, you know, we do something very simple. When you're at practice, wear your helmet. You know, I hate watching practice, and every time a kid comes off the field, they pop their helmet off, and they're, you know, you just, you can't mentally stay locked in to what you're doing on the practice field, and we're not out there more than an hour and 30, hour and 40 minutes. Uh, I don't think high school kids can practice two and a half hours. I don't think you get any good out of that. That's why I love our athletic period being first period of the day because tomorrow morning we're going to do inside run and we're going to do some one kicking game and we're going to do some things that are going to make us better. But it's a short 15 to 20 minute period and they're done. Uh, but but I think discipline comes from a lot of different things. And, and I've said this before, people associate discipline with punishment. I don't have to punish these guys. These guys want to play football, and they want to play at a high level. And, and they know, you've heard both of them say, there's something special happening here this year. We just have to stay focused. In order to stay focused, you've got to be a disciplined person. And when, I, when we started that, I said, your helmet is on your head. And that stops a whole lot of the other potential things you have happen now. They're all kids, and we're all adults, and, and there's time where, yeah, I like to have fun and joke and relax, but I also know when I'm on the practice field or they're on the practice field, it, it's about business at that point. Now, they can go hang out like this or go hang out in the locker room and have fun, but um, our program's always going to be based on you've got to be a structured, disciplined person to be a part of it. You know, the really cool thing is, is Carlos asking you that particular question about discipline. <clears throat> and after the Brenham game, man alive, you know, all the penalties that took place in that ball game, that has been since then almost negated really and truly. And what kind of work and what kind of effort goes into cleaning up that kind of deal? Well, I think the biggest thing is when you see yourself, you know, and, and some of that, I, I, part of it was officials. They threw 33 penalties the first game. The game against Cedar Park, there were nine penalties, and we had four. Uh, so some of that's officiating, some of that, you know, and I told these guys at halftime, I said, they're not going to call holding, so hold uh, <laughs> till they make us either stop it or until they call it. And uh, when you get a crew like that, we as coaches have to be able to adapt to that. But 
you know, we, we have a deal now on our wall in the weight room. It's called our plan to win, and it has five components, and one of those components is win the turnover battle. We haven't turned the ball over in two games, uh, and we've got plus, I think we're plus five right now in the turnover battle. So uh, those kind of things create the dynamic, and then you show them and show them in the fourth quarter. We, we lost the fourth quarter against Brenham. We won the fourth quarter against Bryan. Technically, we won the fourth quarter against Cedar Park because we were up 31 points. It's one point. So, um, but the the same thing is you got to number one, you got to call people and tell them, look, here's what you did, and you know, 15 penalties is ridiculous at any level, uh, but four, and and one of those was on our sideline. So, uh, you know, we really had three penalties that happened in the field and no turnovers. You're gonna win a lot of games like that, Coach. Uh, uh, Last thing, real quick, keys to victory Thursday night. Well, we've got to finish up tomorrow because, like I said, tomorrow's technically Tuesday and Wednesday for us. We've got to finish up a, a good two and a half days of what we're trying to accomplish from a practice standpoint. But probably the biggest thing is we've got to continue to do what we're doing offensively. We've got to be able to run the football. But we need to hit some play action stuff and some passes that are going to get people off of us eventually. Uh, don't give up the big play with your eyes defensively because if they, you know, if they run the dive and you don't, you mess up and your eyes are in the wrong spot and the guy runs 60 yards for a touchdown. Um, and then the other thing is know that, you know, like they said, that you know this is the first of seven steps that we have to take and. You know, and I tell them, I try to be as honest as I can with our guys. This is a, a young football team that we need to go physically beat. There you have it, Dan. Couldn't have said it better myself. Y'all give it up for head coach Rodney Southern joining us tonight. <laughs> coach, appreciate you. No problem. I'll see Thank you on Wednesday. All right, we are running short on time, so we're going to move right along here really quick before we step aside for the evening. want to remind you, we got the broadcast for you on Thursday night, 7 p.m. at Randall Reed Stadium versus West Fork. We come on the air at 6.15 p.m. If you can't make it to New Caney, uh, myself and Brian in Houston Hardcastle will have the call for you guys. I want to give some quick shout-outs real quick. Hey, I want to shout-out the O-line. Again, a great performance Yeah, last give it week. up, O-line. All of them joining us here tonight. And to shout out some other of our great special guests, some former Hornets in the house tonight, Jace Elliott. We mentioned him earlier, former quarterback, Jalen Elliott, former Lady Hornet volleyball star, and uh, Jace's girlfriend, a former Sam Houston women's golf star as well, joining us tonight. And I want to shout out uh, this lady, Stephanie Pitts at Advantage Specialties. You do phenomenal work for our community and everything that you do, and especially these shirts right here that we have for us tonight and everything you do. Stephanie, thank you so much for what you do. And the Huntsville Hornet Football Quarterback Club joining us here tonight. Uh, President Billy Coffin will be with us on the show coming up next week. All right, let us draw the winners here. Uh, perfect, it is open. I'm not looking, so it shows you I'm not cheating. <laughs> do I have two? Yes, I do. All right, here we go. Our first winner of one of the two shirts that we have here, uh, Mr. Caleb Williams. There you go. Hey, love. <laughs> there you go. And our second winner of one of these awesome shirts that will be given away at the last ball game on November the 8th against Splendora, Miss Tammy Elliott. There you go. So there you have it. Both the shirts are given away. We've had another great show here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us here at Chick-fil-A of Huntsville. Join us again next week as we get ready for the ball game against Port Natchez Groves coming up next week. All right. Have a great rest of your Monday evening. And as always, friends, on the count of three, my guy, one, two, three, sting them, Hornets. Good night. We'll see you next time.